I think the message that the general public needs to hear from Angelina Jolie is that, um, first of all, she's not the only woman with this story out there. This is not as uncommon as, um, as one, would, one would believe. Um, I take care of a lot of women with BRCA mutations who could tell this very same story. And, um, and she is telling a story with the face of um, a celebrity, and she is um, an advocate for staying healthy as a woman. She's an advocate for um, the, uh, the going through surgical menopause uh, and how to approach that. Uh, and she's doing it with very much, she's doing it very much with grace and, um, and utilizing her, her position in our society uh, to help bring awareness to this, to both ovarian cancer and breast cancer, as well as to the um, concept of being a previvor which is an individual who prevents, who survives cancer by preventing it. About 20% of ovarian cancers are caused by a genetic predisposition to the cancer, which means 80% aren't, uh, but among those 20%, which is one in five ovarian cancers, there's a gene that we attribute the cancer risk to. So in women who are at high risk, such as those that carry the BRCA or BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene, um, or one of the other genes that uh, have more recently been identified as risk factor genes, um, the recommended standard of care uh, is for risk-reducing surgery to remove both the tubes and ovaries uh, at some point in their life. Um, it's individualized for every woman. Um, there are risk-reducing strategies that can be done prior to that, especially in women who have not yet completed their families. Um, and in those cases, we utilize birth control pills. Um, we also know that breastfeeding reduces the risk of ovarian cancer. Having children reduces the risk of ovarian cancer. Um, but the one thing that's been proven to reduce death from ovarian cancer is that of risk-reducing surgery, so removing the tubes and ovaries uh, before the cancer um, develops. Among all women who develop ovarian cancer, the average age is about 60 mid to mid-60s uh, when they would develop the ovarian cancer. However, we know that certain high-risk groups of women, especially those that carry the BRCA1 mutation, their risk of developing ovarian cancer is much earlier. And as such, we recommend that when they undergo risk-reducing surgery that they do it between the ages of 35 and 40 or when childbearing is complete. One very important aspect of a woman's care if she's diagnosed with ovarian cancer is that of being seen by a genetic counselor for consideration of genetic testing. Since about 20% of ovarian cancers are caused by a gene that we can detect, um, this is very important not only for the woman's continued care, as she may be at high risk for a breast cancer, um, and we would change how we would follow her from a breast cancer screening standpoint. It's also important for family members to know whether they're at potentially higher risk for developing an ovarian cancer or a breast cancer. Also, most recently in February, um, there was a medication that's used to treat ovarian cancer that was FDA approved to treat women who have BRCA mutations and ovarian cancer. So not only is it not only does genetic testing help identify additional potential risks for the individual and their family members, but also now helps us identify potential treatments for the patient. Mm -hmm. At present, most ovarian cancers are diagnosed at stage three or four. Um, at this stage, uh, they're highly lethal. Uh, we know about two-thirds of women who'll be who are diagnosed with an ovarian cancer will die from their disease. And that's because it's diagnosed at, at an advanced stage. Important signs and symptoms to watch for that are associated with ovarian cancer um, are the following. And they can be very vague, but they can be present even in the early stages of ovarian cancer. And these include abdominal bloating, increased abdominal girth, changes in bowel or bladder function, early satiety, which means getting full fast when you're eating, and overall abdominal discomfort or pain. These signs and symptoms are relatively vague and they can happen on a daily basis. Um, however, if these symptoms persist uh, for weeks um, without relenting, uh, you should be seen by your doctor for a full evaluation. It oftentimes takes weeks to months uh, for women to be diagnosed with an ovarian cancer because these signs and symptoms can be quite vague. The diagnosis of ovarian cancer is usually made with imaging and a CA125 test. Um, that can allude to the possibility of there being an ovarian cancer. So imaging tests would include 
a CT scan or an ultrasound or both. Um, and then an elevation of CA125 in the setting of a pelvic or an ovarian mass uh, could be a sign of an ovarian cancer. The real diagnosis happens when the pathologist evaluates the ovary um, and confirms the diagnosis. The most important thing is that a woman dealing with an ovarian mass who has an elevated CA125 uh, and the potential for having ovarian cancer have her surgery done by a gynecologic oncologist. Importantly, Patients, as well as their care providers, should be in tune to the patient's family history. Um, if there is strong family history of certain cancers, in this setting, ovarian cancer and breast cancer, or even just one family member with ovarian cancer, um, the individual should be referred to be seen by a genetic counselor um, who can put together a family pedigree um, and guide the patient as far as whether or not there are certain genes that that individual should be tested for that might put them at higher risk for developing a cancer.